Adventure Ridge hiking tent. Very easy tent to put up, there's literally just one pole that goes through it. Come out with quite minimal gear this time. Sometimes I like bringing loads of gear out just to play around with, uh, but sometimes it's nice to just come out with the bare minimum. But I've got this kind of 24 hour ration pack that I've had for a couple of years and I completely forgotten what type it is or um, what's even really in it. I think there is at least one meal in there. I think this is more of a hiking ration pack to eat on the trail rather than a 24 hour ration pack but it'd be enough for me just for one night out here I don't really need 24 hours worth of food especially since eight before I came out here outside of the canteens and cookware and the tent and sleeping bag obviously all I've bought with me are a simple lighter this little ultralight torch and a little folding knife kind of lamb's foot one my EDC knife so a very simple minimal kit today My stump seat has got an almost perfect indentation of my buttocks now from where I've been using it for so many years. But I have to sit on it just right and it's uh, actually quite comfortable.
the size of that caterpillar. Quite a beautiful pattern on it as well. Beautiful, isn't it? Love this time of year. Every year without fail, I just find it so uh, kind of magical when you're seeing everything springing back to life in late springtime and the weather's getting warmer, everything looks so lush and green. Can't help but put a smile on my face. As much as I hate winter, those sort of first few months of the year, January through March, if it wasn't for them, it wouldn't feel quite as special when you get to this time of year and everything starts springing to life again. One of those things that's guaranteed to put a smile on my face, along with synthwave music by The Midnight and Cobra Kai, the series. For anyone who hasn't seen it, it's a, kind of a continuation of Karate Kid, even if you're not into the Karate Kid movies, which I'm not particularly, but uh, it's just got such a great cast of characters it really knows how to use the legacy characters respectfully and evolve their story while also introducing interesting and likeable new characters which is something that a lot of modern movies and tv shows struggle with where they usually shit all over the legacy characters and introduce boring bland new characters that we're supposed to follow who tend to just kind of repeat what the old characters did anyway but cobra kai not like that at all so if you're not into the Karate Kid movies, definitely give it a go. It's one of the few modern TV shows, that's pretty much the only modern TV show I watch anymore. I'll probably give Stranger Things season four a go. I loved season one and two, but season three really lost me. No nuclear apocalypse yet, so that's good. Even though I joked about it in the last video, it wasn't really something I was particularly concerned about, but I did have two dreams about it so I guess at the back of my mind it was concerning me. I had one dream that uh, a load of Russian tanks came down the road and were blowing holes in people's homes and uh, then there was a Russian soldier outside my house and he had my dad hostage and then another Russian soldier burst through the window and injected me in the throat with something to paralyze me and then he got clothes pegs to kind of peg my eyes open <laughs> for some reason then I woke up uh, and then it was the the next night I had a dream that uh, I was out in town and everyone was running around saying oh there's been a chemical attack and a chemical attack so in retaliation we launched nukes but then Russians shot the nukes out of the sky and fired nukes back at us and so everyone's panicking and trying to get underground and I went into some underground uh, place under some building and it was really claustrophobic and I was having to try and get through these really narrow dirt tunnels underground. Uh, both of them are pretty crazy. I do love dreams though. I could do a whole video just babbling on about dreams. I might do it at some point. I actually wanted to go over health in this video, mental and physical health, because uh, the other day, a couple of weeks ago, I was out and about and actually ran into someone who watches my videos and um, he came and said hello and all this. And uh, he said that my videos had kind of helped him with his mental health, which is really nice to hear, because it's nice to think that I'm actually you know, helping people somewhat. Um, and I've struggled myself with mental health in the past. It was about 10 years ago now. Um, I had a period of about three years of my life where I was really depressed. Uh, just all the time, you know, this constant sort of sadness and uh, not feeling joy in anything. And I've thought for a while about talking about it in videos, just to, to talk about what helped me and kind of cured me, basically. Um, and I may well have spoken about this in a video before and I've forgotten about it, so I'm just going to repeat myself. I don't think I ever actually did uh, get around to talking about it, so I thought I'd go over that and just things that helped me at the time. And then also go on to uh, physical health as well and what helped me. Um, because after lockdown, you know, mental and physical health is taking a real hit. And I wasn't even against lockdown initially. Uh, it just went on too long. And, god damn, 
it's affected so many people. People I know, um, you know, mental and, and physically. The amount of people I've seen who I, you know, hadn't seen for a couple of years, and I've seen them recently over the last month or two, and they've put on so much weight. And I'm talking a drastic amount of weight, not just put on a little bit. But that two years has really done people over. And I did as well. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm above all this. I put on weight too at the end of last year, and well, during last year in general. I was up and down with it. Um, you know, it's kind of hard not to during periods where you, you can't get out so much and do so much. And uh, just kind of sit at home comfort eating. And so I did want to cover those two topics. I don't know when I talk about physical health, getting in shape, some people think it's just uh, being shallow or vain, but it's not that I just want everyone to look beautiful for my viewing pleasure. Uh, to me, you know, health and fitness in your body is literally your life. You, you can't have one without the other. So to, to not really appreciate that and make the most of it, you know, getting, I mean, I see people in their early 20s who are sort of waddling when they walk because they put on so much weight. You think, what are you going to be like when you get to 40, 50, 60 years old? I know it's not going to make you immune to death, but it, you know, it doesn't hurt your chances. To, to be fitter and healthier, to live a longer life, and also live a happier life. I don't want to get to 70, 80 years old, fingers crossed I do get that far, uh, and, and, you know, be immobile and have to have some carer come round to wash my balls for me and wipe my ass. You know, I want to still be independent, I want to still be able to enjoy life when I get older. So, to, to me it's just, it's, you know, caring about your life, it's not just vanity. And there are people who, have hor you know they're born with horrible conditions or they're hurt in an accident and disabled and they'd love to be more physically able but they don't have a choice about it so when people just throw it away because eventually we're all going to get infirm you know we're all going to get old and, and aches and pains set in muscle mass reduces it's harder to burn off the fat you know it's coming for all of us you, you, you can't you can't avoid it eventually but why would you accelerate it why wouldn't you want to try and push back that tide of decay because that's what it is it's your body decaying as you get older and I love life I, you know life is so precious and fragile so it, it, the idea of not really like, appreciating that by understanding that you, you know your your body and your health is an intrinsic part of life and living it's almost an affront to life you know <laughs> when people just ab abuse their bodies but of course it's their bodies. Yeah, I know, I completely understand, it's really none of my business. It's I completely down to each individual person what you, they want to do with their bodies. I do understand that. But I'm just sort of wanted to explain why, to me, it's important, rather than, you know, just seeming like I'm being shallow and vain. But it's also why I hate all this body positivity bullshit. Like, body positivity would be actually looking after your body, not just being lazy and greedy and then using the excuse, oh, it's body positivity. I hate that shit. And it tends to, sorry girls, but it does tend to be women who push that stuff. You know, you, you very rarely see fat, hairy men naked on the front covers of magazines in just the boxer shorts. It tends to only be women who are, you know, sort of grotesquely overweight who are then on the front covers of magazines claiming that they're big and beautiful and it's body positive, even though they're like 25 and absurdly, dangerously overweight, you know. I don't agree with putting stick thin models on magazines either, but you know, there is a happy medium. Let's have some common sense about it. It doesn't have to be one extreme or the other. I love seeing all the bracken out. Once bracken starts sprouting, it's a sure sign that summer's in the air. Makes everything look so lush and almost a bit exotic. And gives me some more cover when I'm camping as well. But yeah, with the mental health thing, um, like, I will say, right from the get-go, I am not an expert on mental health, or even physical health, to be honest. It's purely my own observations and experiences, myself, and what's worked for me. So just it worked for me doesn't mean it's going to work for other people. But, um, yeah, with my experiences with it, uh, I always think there's kind of three main types of depression. There's people who get depressed because they've got, uh, you know, a chemical imbalance, they're just predispositioned to it. Uh, then there are people who have a really traumatic event happen to them and it's going to have, you know, terrible psychological effects. And then there's people who were like me, where I just had a negative mindset, really. Just had an unhealthy mindset. And I think with mental health, 
much like physical health, you can train yourself to be fitter and healthier. Now, it's not going to make you immune, you know, you, no matter how much you work out and try and stay physically healthy, it's not going to make you immune to every disease and condition out there. Of course not. And same with mental health. You can train your mind to be healthier, but it's not going to make you immune to any and all forms of depression and, and mental health problems. But it, it can help. It can make your, your body stronger and better able to, to deal with conditions and, and illnesses. And it can make your mind stronger and better able to deal with emotional situations. But back when I got depressed, it was mainly because I had a negative mindset, but there, there were a few little things that happened. Like I left college and I didn't really know what to do with myself. I was just sort of out in the world um, without a clue. Uh, and then me and my girlfriend at the time split up and there was some crazy stuff around that. I could, I could do a whole video on that, on her and her family. Um, and then uh, my dog died. So it's those three things, which if they happen now, would obviously make me sad and upset, but it wouldn't be anywhere near as big a deal to me now as it was back then when I was young and uh, just wasn't mentally able to get, handle all these things at the same time. And just sort of kind of three quite big life changes. You know, I'd been with that girl for a year, been at college for a year, and then my dog I'd had for 16 years. I mean, I'd had him through school, high school, college, first job, first girlfriend, you know, he was always there. Followed, you know, he used to follow me around everywhere, he used to sleep in my bed even for the last year or so of his life. So that was a big deal when he died, it was very upsetting. Uh, so yeah, those, those things all combined together. Uh, I just sort of fell into a real slump of sadness that went on for about three years, just wallowing and feeling sorry for myself. And of course you can't avoid feeling sad, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But I do put a limit on myself now, which you know, sometimes it's, you know, it's easier said than done, but I tend to let myself wallow for about a week over something and then say right I've got to pull myself together now get on with things because there's no point just wasting time you know wallowing because it doesn't accomplish anything I'm going to keep scratching because there's mosquitoes everywhere I hate putting mosquito spray on because it makes me all sticky so I just kind of accept that they're going to bite me now and then I put the uh, the after spray on which I find if you put it on straight away it actually works pretty well if you know if you get the bites straight away um, it neutralizes it and I don't really have a problem with them Anyway, off topic there. But yeah, I, just, I got so I just didn't really care about anything. Um, nothing brought me joy. You know, like I said at the start of this video, how uh, coming out here never fails to put a smile on my face. But actually, back then it did. Nothing, no matter how much it was something that I had passion for and enjoyed normally none of it had an effect anymore i just sort of was numb to it and the thing with depression is it makes you kind of blind to positives and hypersensitive to negatives i think that's one of the worst symptoms of it really uh and i i got so that i put on weight because i didn't really care what i was eating i uh, had my head shaved because i couldn't be bothered to deal with my hair every day uh because I put on weight and was eating a lot of crap ice and because I would wear the same clothes day in day out for sometimes weeks like the same t-shirt everything because um, I just didn't care and because I put on weight and I was eating crap I was sweating badly and it was smelly and I smelt I smelt of BO real bad uh, but I just, I just didn't care uh, I didn't clean my teeth much maybe once a week or two um, uh, sorry once or twice a week it was uh, so I got bleeding gums because I wasn't taking care of my oral health uh, shave, yeah, shave my head um, so I didn't have to deal with my hair. I, was, you know, I let myself get into a real state, and it was silly. But you know, when you you fall into that, it can be a vicious cycle. Because I then that made me feel worse because I I wasn't proud of myself being that way, and I you know, I didn't like my appearance. I didn't like that I smelt in that. But then at the same time, there's I just couldn't muster up any energy to do anything about it. And I've known other people like this as well, who, uh, you know, they'll complain about things that they've kind of bought on themselves that way, the way I did, just not, not looking after yourself, but then they just can't be bothered to do anything about it. And, and when you get depressed, it, it just saps your energy to do anything. But then one Christmas, I kind of had an epiphany that I needed to sort myself out. And I realized that a lot of it was down to having a negative mindset. You know, I would, focus too much on negative things and thinking about negative things and I, I kind of realized that there's no point to that you've got to be very cold and logical with yourself if you are like that you know and realize that well 
thinking about these things is it accomplishing anything you know sometimes when you have a problem you do need to think about it and go over it and you can deal with it then but so many things that a lot of people concern themselves with you know if someone's offended you if someone's done something that annoys you if you've done something that annoyed you if you get social anxiety that was something i had a bit as well back then uh, so i'd go over every conversation i had with someone every interaction kind of being overly critical of myself like, oh did i say something stupid you know, um, did I offend them when I said this, that and the other? Just, you know, ridiculously overthinking it. And it would accomplish nothing anyway, because once something's done and it's in the past, going over it in your head isn't going to change it, because it's happened and it's gone and done. So you've got to be very cold and logical with yourself and say, right, thinking about that is pointless, not going to accomplish anything, because it's in the past now. So I, just, I got so that I would force myself, every time I had negative thoughts come into my head, I would force myself to stop, I would catch myself out on it and start thinking about something positive. And that could be, you know, it didn't have to be anything major. I, uh, back then I was really into The Walking Dead, so I would often think about the last episode of The Walking Dead that I'd seen, um, or, you know, a new movie that was coming out I was looking forward to, any trivial thing, but as long as it's a positive thing to think about. And, you know, it's easier said than done when you, something has upset you and it's going around in your head. But you've got to really catch yourself out on it and really kind of force yourself to not dwell on negative things, think about positive things. Same with things you might see in the media, and that's why I think it's actually a good idea to stay away from the media a lot of the time, because, uh, and I, I experienced this last year actually, in, in 2020, when I started uh, watching a bit more of the media, and even YouTubers that were reporting things in the media, and more and more negative things were being inserted into my mind that otherwise I would never have known about or cared about. So I, I do think staying away from that stuff is important too. Because a lot of the time it's stuff that's not going to affect you. You'd never know about if you hadn't been told about it. And thinking about it isn't going to accomplish anything anyway. So I started doing this and, you know, for, for a few months at least, you do have to constantly catch yourself out on it. And it's something you have to like very, be very conscious of to do it. But gradually, over time, after maybe six months, maybe even a year, it got so it just came naturally. Like I just didn't have negative thoughts anymore. And because I'd, I'd basically trained my mind not to. I'd trained my mind out of negative thinking. And it's pretty much continued to this day. This, like I said, this was t nine years ago. It was 2013 when I sort of sorted myself out. So yeah, nine years ago. And since then it's worked a treat for me. Because now, it, like I say, it comes naturally. I don't have to catch myself out on it. I don't have to put any effort in whatsoever to thinking positively. Because it just, it's, my, my mind's just altered to think positively and like I say I this will not work for everyone I know everyone's different and everyone's got different reasons for mental health problems they may have that are far more severe than mine were but I think there are a lot of people that just have a negative mindset they haven't really had anything terrible happen in their lives particularly uh, and you know you, you can go to the doctors and they'll just dish out pills to you because the easiest thing to do I've never been one for taking pills unless it's actually a cure, like antibiotics or something, fair enough. But headache tablets and anything like that where it just gets rid of the symptoms but it doesn't actually cure you, I've always been quite against because, and I, I'm like this in life in general, I don't want to stick a plaster on something, I want to actually fix the problem, not just be distracted from the problem. So uh, for, for me personally, you know, just going and getting a load of antidepressants didn't really do anything. And I think that's a bit, uh, you know, doctors are a bit too quick to dish them out. Though they can help, because if that sort of numbs the, the depression and it, you know, helps you to get out doing positive things, because that's a big thing as well. Once you start thinking more positively, you're going to be more open to trying new things and going out and doing things that you enjoy. And then that makes you even more happy and positive and confident. And it kind of escalates. And at the same time that I had trained my mind to be healthier and more positive I was also getting back in shape as well and I do think that's a, a big part of mental health too that can can really help because one it releases chemicals that can help to uh, make you feel better but also just the sense of accomplishment and there is an element of vanity in there you know I think most of us feel better if we look in the mirror and we like what we see and you know just put a big grin on your face that's nothing wrong with that but uh, also the sense of accomplishment that comes with it. And I'll get more onto that when I start talking more about physical health later on. Another big thing was 
my becoming more self-aware, and this is another thing that I've observed in quite a few people I've known, is that I think especially when you get to your kind of mid to late 20s, there's almost this desperation, like, oh my God, I've got to settle down, I've got to get in a relationship, think about having kids, get a career, get a, get a mortgage, and do the things that kind of everyone else does. Like there's this unwritten rule that you have to sort of meet these expectations. But that life isn't for everyone. We're all different. So the idea that we should all be living a very similar life, going along a similar path, it just isn't realistic, but I think it just makes it easier um, for the authorities in particular, if they can get us all on one particular path, so we're all doing the same thing. Um, but also, you know, some people, they, they will put expectations on you because it's either what they want or because it makes them feel good to just get everyone doing the same thing they're doing, you know, kind of reinforces to them that they're doing the right thing even though they might not necessarily be that happy in the lifestyle they're choosing but becoming more self-aware so that you are not influenced by outside forces you're not influenced by the media not even influenced necessarily by friends and family you are you really focus and come to a realization of what you want out of life and that might not be what anyone else would want it might be what other people would think would be a terrible life but you've got to really be self-aware of what you want out of life because with me, I um, I got I got to that sort of mid twenties age, and I was thinking, oh, you know, I better got to get a career and get in a relationship and you know settle down. And I tried it, and I kept failing. You know, I'd get in these relationships and they'd fail, and I'd get different jobs and I wouldn't enjoy it and it'd fail. And then that'd make me feel worse because um, I would be like, oh, why can't I get these things to work? Why am I failing at these things? And it wasn't until I realised, well, the reason I'm failing at these things is because it's not actually what I want. That's, that's not me. I don't want to work for someone else in a regular nine to five job. It bores the hell out of me. I, I'm not a relationship type person either. I mean, I, maybe I just haven't met the right person, but you know, sort of traditional relationships and that don't, don't really appeal to me actually. I don't want to settle down. I even hate the term settling down. It's boring as hell. I don't want to settle down. <laughs> um, but you know, I think sometimes it's so easy to just go along with what you feel like you're supposed to do so becoming self-aware enough to know what you really want out of life and then focusing on that will make you so much happier because if you try and do something that you know your heart isn't in it you're going to fail at it and sometimes you might not even realize that your heart isn't in it you might not even realize that it's not really what you want you just kind of you know a lot of people go with the flow with these things but once you realize what you really want out of life and focus on that that in itself i think will make you a lot happier And all these things will hopefully build your self-confidence because self-confidence is a big thing as well with mental health. Um, back when I was depressed, I would very rarely tell people much about myself because I'd be so sort of insecure about what they'd think of me. But then that just made me seem really boring because I wasn't ever talking about anything that I was passionate about. Uh, whereas now, you know, I'll happily tell anyone I meet who I get talking to, um, you know, that I collect toys and I love going out camping and I'm into survivalism and stuff like that. Even if people aren't interested in the same things you are, a lot of people, if they see that you're passionate about something and you're confident in what you're passionate about, doesn't matter how silly it might be, uh, they find that quite endearing. So, you want, you know, another thing is don't ever be afraid to be yourself. And I know that's a really cliche thing to say, be yourself and that, but, you know, if you really believe in yourself and you're passionate about what you like and what you enjoy that that's quite an endearing quality that people like I bought a very simple stove with me it's just an alcohol burner with a little stand that goes on top a couple of little brackets to put the saucepan on as i showed you earlier when i was making my drink here with these uh, brackets they simply just slide together like that and then you put it on top of your alcohol stove burner. I've shown this in a previous video I did last year, but it's, it's actually quite a handy thing to have, may, even more for day trips rather than camping overnight. If you want to take a little stove with you, just having the burner and those little brackets that fold up together, really quite useful. Though it's not quite as sturdy, obviously. Um, you have to kind of position the saucepan just right on there so it doesn't tip over. 
and my Campart saucepan, which I love. I've shown this in other videos, I know, but this uh, it's got sentimental value because this was the first camping cook set I ever bought. It came with a whole alcohol burner set of dishes and the, the kind of uh, windbreaker stove and all that. Really great set. I don't even know if they still sell these anymore. It was about 20 years ago I bought this from an army surplus store. It's a great set. And it's, considering how much I've used it, it's still in great condition. There's not really much staining at all on the bottom there. And I am a bit anal about getting my pots and pans clean, so I, do, I guess I do put a reasonable amount of effort into keeping them clean. So this old alcohol burner is one that I've had for about 20 years that I got with that Camp Art cook set, but it still works perfectly fine, even though I've had to fix it up a bit where it kind of corroded and would leak. I just put some liquid weld very messily on there and it's worked a treat. Yeah, this is the ration pack. It seems to be mainly biscuits and energy bars, but it says that there is one cuisine ready to eat meal. It doesn't actually say what that meal is, so it will be interesting. It must be something I like for me to have ordered it, but I just can't remember what the hell it was. All right, let's open this up and see what it's like. Loads of these energy things that I never eat or drink. God, I've got so many of these now in a box. Probably should try and flog them. Fast energy gel. I guess they would be handy in an emergency. Maybe I should just start bunging these things in various survival kits I've got. Mixed drink, another one of those energy things, probably loaded with sugar. Uh, commando bars, hmm. interesting to try. Price is a lot of them. Uh, lots of commando bars. Alcohol wipes, some coffees, handy. Water purification tablets. Handy. High energy bar. Now these two things. We've got a meal here. All right, it's all in foreign, so I haven't got a clue what the hell's in there. This is gonna be interesting to try. I don't know if this is the dessert, and this is the main meal. I'll probably cook it in that tin. And yeah, this thing here, whatever the hell that is. Yeah, I think this is the dessert, because there's like a slice of chocolate there, so I don't know if this is some kind of mini chocolate cake or something, which uh, would be actually quite appealing. This has got to be the best canteen I've ever bought. It's a two litre one, so you've got a decent amount of water in there. Comes with a nice pouch and strap. Though the pouch does feel a bit cheap, I do worry that it's, uh, sooner or later it's going to rip off at the sides there. But it's got a little pocket at the front to put matches and water purification tablets in. And the bottle itself, like normally when I buy these plastic uh, water canteens, they taste of plastic a bit, and it's very hard to get that plasticky taste to go away. I've got so many old kind of military style plastic canteens and they still have a bit of a, a plasticky taste when I drink from them which isn't ideal uh, but this one never has never had any taste of plastic from it it's the probably the only plastic uh, canteen I've bought that hasn't it was about 12 pound off eBay you can get them in a plain green uh, pouch and then a camo one and I might actually get one in the plain green pouch as well so I've got a spare um, that maybe I can sort of use in more day-to-day life it doesn't look quite so tactical and militaristic but yeah i do absolutely love this canteen i think it's a, a kind of an american style uh it's sort of square the only thing is it's very difficult to stand up because of the shape of it, it just sort of falls over but other than that yeah probably the best canteen i've got and i like this one because uh, I, I like this sort of traditional shape uh, kind of boater bottle type uh, i've got another one which is leather but inside is a sort of flimsy um, plastic polythene uh, bottle and it just tastes terrible of plastic and I'm never able to get the taste out of that one so I never use it. Uh, 
and then this one I, I like the shape of this one and this one doesn't have a plasticky taste in but the lid it was never very good it always leaked a little bit and over time the lid is cracked so it leaks even more if I ever have it uh, on its side or something so not ideal either and I guess you shouldn't buy water canteens just for how they look <laughs> there's just something kind of traditional about the old boater bottle style that I like when I'm out here I'm going to try one of these commando bars, see what it's like. It's quite nice. Woke up to it raining today. It's not heavy rain, it's just like a very slight drizzle, so I don't really mind it to be honest. I don't mind being out in it. Just a bit of a pain in the ass when I get home having to dry the tent out. But it can actually be quite atmospheric when it's like this. It's more when it's just a, uh, a light grey haze of overcast weather that I hate it. But when it's just a bit dull, it's a little bit drizzly, uh, now and then, it, so it can be quite atmospheric really. Especially if you're walking through the forest listening to true crime. But yeah, I want to go on to physical health now today because um, I think it, it can feel like a big deal when you first start trying to change your, your diet and get into an exercise regime. It's the same for me. If I go for a period without working out for a few months, getting back to it feels such a strain. Like lifting weights or running, it's such a strain on your body. It just feels kind of awful initially. Um, but in my experience, and hopefully this will help to encourage people a bit, in my experience, a week to three weeks, one to three weeks it takes to become so much easier. Not, not because you've got fitter, not because you've got stronger, but it's just your body getting used to it, and also psychologically getting over that hurdle of thinking, oh my god, a heavy weight or running. But once you get over the, just the, the physical stress that you're not used to, and your body adjusts to that, which, you know, say you're, going, say you're working out three times a week, I'd say one to three weeks tops and your body's going to get used to it and it will feel a lot easier. And then psychologically you're kind of getting over that hurdle of feeling like it's going to be a big strain as well. And then, you know, the thing with working out is that you don't get results straight away and that can be a bit disheartening uh, because, you know, you can't just go to the gym once and then come home and see the difference and it motivates you like that. You know, if, you know for the first month or two or three even, you've got to be really kind of dedicated and disciplined with yourself to, to keep at it but usually around about the two month mark and just like you know one to three weeks isn't a long time so if you've got that in your mind that in just that space of time it's going to get easier I'd say in about two months you will see the difference and two months isn't that big of a, of a time gap so especially if you take pictures if you take a picture of yourself when you start because you don't really see a gradual change in yourself necessarily looking in the mirror but if you take a picture of yourself at the start and then two months later compare yourself to it, you, you should see a difference. And that's when the fun starts, when you see that difference in you. And you know, you're maybe more pleased with how you look. And just that feeling of you know, accomplishment, that you have done that. And I think that's really good for your mental health as well. Because it's one of those things where no one else can do that for you. That's all you. And no one else can even get in your way really either it's not like other objectives you might have in life like i don't know finding a relationship or getting into a job you enjoy you know there can be a lot of hurdles with that you know sometimes caused by other people but with getting yourself in 
you know, healthy and fit. It's all down to you. So when you do accomplish it, there's nothing in your way and you know that it's all you. It's all your dedication and hard work. And that's such a great feeling. And then that motivates you more. Once you get that motivation of seeing the results and feeling so good that you have, with your own discipline, made a change to yourself like that then you push yourself harder and then the harder you're pushing yourself the, the more you're going to see results and it escalates like that and i'd say with diet it's only a, a case of a week or two or three as well to change because like for, once again this is all my own examples from my life so it's not necessarily going to apply to everyone or work for everyone but with me uh you know I, I can easily get addicted to sugary stuff i just love it like chocolate and that last year i was having three chocolate mockers a day on top of then maybe a bowl of ice cream and a chocolate bar or a bit of cake, you're like, so, so much sugar. And when I first sort of tried to get off it, it was really difficult because the, the cravings are constantly there niggling at me. And it might sound silly, but you know, sugar is actually incredibly addictive. That's why all these companies load everything up with it. Uh, it's surprising the amount of things that are loaded with sugar that you wouldn't even expect because they want you to get addicted to their product to keep buying it. But that aside, uh, you know, it is really difficult to have these constant cravings. But I find that if I can just go a week cold turkey, then the cravings pretty much go away. And one week isn't very long, even though it does feel long when you're getting the cravings. But, you know, one week of, of being dedicated and going through, you know, that sort of annoyance and unpleasantness of having the cravings, and they'll, they'll pretty much go away. And it's not just that the cravings go away. Over time, you then find that you don't even fancy those foods anymore you can't even stomach them like I couldn't drink a chocolate mocha now it would be too sickly sweet I just I don't have any desire to have one whatsoever I'm actually quite off you know sort of put off by the thought of it same with the uh, KFC when I was younger I used to love KFC but I could not stomach a KFC now far too greasy and salty so well, that makes it even easier so you, you get over the cravings initially and then you get so you, you actively dislike don't want those foods uh, and if you're working out hard as well, you'll find that you start getting cravings for healthy food. You know, it's easy if you're sort of sitting around not doing very much, your body isn't necessarily craving the nutrition or the protein or whatever. So it's easier, to, I think, to get into bad eating habits and just eat comfort food and things that taste nice. But if you're working out hard, I find at least that uh, I get cravings for healthy foods. You know, my, your body knows what it needs. If you've worked out hard, it's going to crave foods that are going to fuel it you know so i think more so if you're kind of weight training and that i don't know if it would necessarily be the same for just doing cardio stuff but uh for the weight training i find like i really crave protein stuff after a heavy workout you know having something that doesn't have much protein in it doesn't satisfy me doesn't fulfill me the cravings now are for healthy things you know some protein and some vegetables you know the nutrition as well it's not all about protein you, I, I get the craving for sort of nutritious things so bear all that in mind you know you get over the cravings in a week or so completely go off those foods and then get new cravings for healthy foods but it's just getting over that initial week to three weeks of getting over the food cravings getting over the shock to the system of doing exercise and putting your body through a, a kind of a, a strain that it's not used to because i think psychologically is a big thing with working out uh, you know, there are weights that I used to think would be impossible to ever lift. You know, they just seem so massive and so heavy. And yet now I lift them, don't think about it. And even after I'd gone for quite a period without working out over lockdown, when I went back into it, I pretty much went straight into the heavy weights because that psychological barrier wasn't there. Even though that wasn't necessarily a clever thing to do because I think I, uh, I probably should have built up to that because I, I did end up sort of uh, causing some injuries to my joints a bit where they weren't, they weren't supported by the, the muscle mass that they used to be. Um, so I'm not saying that's necessarily a good idea to do that, but it does show that you, you get over these mental hurdles of things seeming impossibly heavy or impossibly hard to do uh, once you've, you've done it a little bit. All right, I'm going to try this meal now, which I have no idea what it is. Looks disgusting. Smells all right. I think it's some kind of pasta. I think I'll try and cook it in this rather than putting it in the saucepan. Got this plastic fork and spoon with it and uh, it says they're compostable. It's interesting. They feel pretty sturdy, like they feel harder than your regular plastic spoon or fork.
compostable spoon broke as I was stirring the food, so not that good. Right, let's try it. It's just very cheesy. It just tastes like a load of cheese, really. I guess there must be pasta and bits and pieces in there. But, uh, nope, <laughs> not keen. It is it's just like some big cheesy mush. But, uh, I'm hungry, so I don't have much choice. Couldn't even film myself eating that stuff. <laughs> My face was just constantly up. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, but uh, I'm going to try this thing now. Ooh, this is more like it. Basically, it's little chocolate slices. What's in them? Oh, it's dark chocolate as well. Oh. Now, if I eat chocolate, I try and stick to dark chocolate. So it could be quite good for you. Very nice. I think there's two layers of it as well. So there's quite a bit in there. Yeah. And that's nice. The thing with dark chocolate is uh, I can't eat too much of it as much as I do like it. So it, uh, as well as it being better for you than other types of chocolate, it also kind of stops you from having too much. I feel like it satisfies me quicker than eating regular chocolate would, where I could eat, I don't know, a whole bar of dairy milk or something, or a whole Toblerone. With dark chocolate, you know, you have a couple of little bits and then it. Uh, kind of satisfies you. I didn't bring a shovel or anything out with me. I normally have a little fold out shovel that I got from Poundland, which is really good. But I find actually, if you find a decent stick like this, which has kind of a notch on the end like that, that's really good for digging in the soil, for digging yourself a hole to do your business in. Especially because it's quite soft, peaty soil here anyway. That really softens the soil up just with a bit of wood with a notch in it like that and then that makes it easier to just pull that soft soil out once it's been churned up a bit with the stick loosened it up i'm gonna have another commando bar though they're quite nice I think I've worn this jumper before and people always ask me about it. I have no idea what it's called, what type of jumper it's called or, uh, or where you could even get one from. It's actually, it was my dad's back in the 80s, so this jumper is probably 40 years old. And this is why I like getting kind of army surplus type stuff to wear out here. I know it might seem a bit overly militaristic, but it's such better quality than anything you'd get from like a high street chain like Go Outdoors or somewhere like that. They're like, this stuff lasts. The only thing that's ever gone wrong with this is one of the buttons off of the shoulder came off once. But that's it. And I wear this quite a lot in winter when I'm out walking the dogs. I wear it, you know, five days a week for a few hours a day. I'm about to get off now. I've filmed about 100 clips this trip, so uh, it's going to be fun to edit. I guess it's going to be a long one. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching again and uh, hopefully see you again soon.